Hey, what's up everybody? It's David McGill. Now, yesterday uh, I was asked to um, shoot a video over a particular question that a viewer left under one of my videos. So here we are. Um, that viewer, uh, the name is Deb Print J. And the question was, can you do a video on how to prepare for the DOT audit within the first 90 days? Uh, what to prepare for, how to set up. I'm under 26,000 pounds, so I was told I don't need to do the drug program. All right, so, so Deb's question is related to the, um, the DOT audit that all new carriers um, must undergo. Now, let's give a little backstory. The FMCSA, or the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, they are the government agency that um, grants operating authority to carriers throughout the United States. Um, that organization, that government agency, um, they're responsible for you know keeping the roads safe. So once you apply for your operating authority and you meet all the requirements, um, you'll be granted operating authority. Now you are considered um, a new entrant. Um, you are considered a new entrant in, you know, in, in the FMCSA's database. What that means is in the first, sometime in the first 18 months, now you don't know when it's gonna happen, but you will be subjected to an audit. Now, what is the FMCSA looking for in that audit? Well, they're looking to make sure that um, you can provide evidence and documentation that you are in fact following the safety guidelines um, in your trucking business because again their job is to keep the roads safe so at some point in the first 18 months you're going to get an email um, now i received my email from the indiana state police so my guess is depending on where you live um, you'll also receive an email from your state's police department and in that email they basically give you a list of um, items that you need to provide through email. Now, it's not an on-site audit or anything like that. They don't come out to your to your company, to your office, you know, and review any records or anything like that. It's actually it's a it's a correspondence audit. So, what that means is they'll request documents via email, and you can just submit those documents, you know, back to them through email. Now, what are those documents? Um, I'm gonna go through the list and you guys can, you know, make a note of all these things or, you know, you can just hit the link in my description of this video. Um, I'll link to this list right there. So you can just click the link in your email address and this document will automatically be uh, emailed to you. So here we go. So the first thing that they're gonna ask for is a list of your drivers, a driver's list. So no matter how many drivers you have, you'll, you'll list those drivers. Um, in my case, I started off with one driver, so um, you know, I just had to you know, put you know, my one driver's, his name, um, his date of hire, his date of birth, and you know, his driver's license number information you know, on the list. A vehicle list. So what that is, you'll, you'll list um, you know, your truck, your truck VIN numbers, however many trucks you have, you're going to list those VIN numbers as well as the unit numbers that you identify for each of those VINs. Um, also, you'll give them your registration cab card um, that'll contain your um, plate, your, your license plate information as well. Next thing you'll provide is proof of insurance. So that's pretty self-explanatory what the proof of insurance is. Um, you'll need to give your um, driver's medical certificate. So all drivers are required to have, you know, a, a DOT um, official um, physical. So once they complete that, they'll receive, you know, their certificate. Now that certificate is something you'll provide during the safety audit. Also, you'll give a copy of your driver's motor vehicle report. Now that information, um, you can pull that yourself or if you're participating um, in a compliance program like I am, the compliance agency that you use, 
they maintain all of those records for you. So they'll pull your driver's MVR. Um, they'll also, you know, store their driver's license information, their medical certificates, and they will notify you of, you know, any impending expiration dates. Um, for like, you know, say for instance, their driver's license is gonna be expiring in like the next 30 days. You'll receive an email from your safety compliance company that you're using, notifying you to, you know, remind your driver that their driver's license is suspended. That way, you know, you're never caught in a bad situation. Another thing outside of the driver's license, you're also gonna need to provide um, your um, hours of service records. So your e-logs or your log books. Right now, because there, there's, you know, um, the ELD mandate, then the paper logs are, you know, far and few between. So most likely you'll be providing, you know, your e-log documentation for, I believe it's 30 days. Let me verify. Yep. 30 consecutive days of um, records of duty status for one driver. Also, vehicle inspections. So on your trucks, you're required to have DOT inspection every year. And as a part of your DOT audit, safety audit, you'll have to provide a copy of that inspection. Drug and alcohol testing records. Now, these are records that this is a part of that safety compliance um, program that I mentioned earlier. So the company that I use, they, um, they provide you know, the pre-employment uh, drug screens, the post-accident drug screens, and also the random, you know, drug screens. So, all of the information that I need to have on file for my drivers is a part of their driver qualification file, or DQF. Um, all of that information is stored online um, by my safety compliance company. So, when it's time for, you know, when it was time for me to complete my safety audit, I simply just had to log into my account, download all the records um, and all the forms that they, the state police were requesting and just you know forward it on. Hopefully this won't apply to anybody, but accident records. You know, if, if you're involved, um, if your company's involved in an accident, then those records, you'll, you'll need to provide um, the accident report as well. Now, if you transport hazardous materials, then there's going to be some um, hazardous material shipping documents you'll also need to provide as part of your DOT safety audit. Now, it's a pretty easy process, assuming that, you know, you have everything in order. That's a very big part of, you know, remaining compliant is just keeping good records, staying neat and organized, you know, with your documentation. Now here's a here's a fun fact. Uh, when I started off um, with my trucking business, the way that I found out that there was a market for other trucking business owners who needed help organizing and keeping their um, trucking business information in check was based on the safety audit. So one day I received this email. I was sitting at the kitchen table working on my computer. I got this email that was requesting all this information. So I just went into my computer, um, put the files together and sent them back over in about 15 minutes. Now the state police officer, she gave me a call, you know, as soon as she received my documents and she basically asked like, how did you, you know, get that stuff to me so quick? And I just let her know that, you know, all that stuff was just saved, you know, in my, on my computer, you know, nice and nice and organized. And what she said is she does this on a daily basis and it's very difficult. She's noticed for a lot of carriers to, you know, get all their records together, you know, to pass a safety audit. So what she said was I might want to consider going into some type of consulting role because there are a lot of carriers out there who, who need help keeping things like this organized. Now it's just kind of second nature for me because, you know, in my job as an accountant, that's pretty much all we do is, is keep things, you know, organized and so that, that way it's easy to analyze and things like that. So needless to say, you know, we passed the safety audit with flying colors. Um, once you pass the safety audit, you receive a letter that 
basically grants you permanent operating authority, which means you're no longer in like the probationary period. You are an official permanent carrier. Now, just because you receive that permanent authority, it doesn't mean that it can't be revoked. You know, so assuming that you start doing some things, uh, you know, that don't comply with the FMCSA's guidelines, then they can revoke your authority. If you're, you know, getting put out of service too many times, um, if your safety score is going down or any other things like that, um, your operating authority can be revoked. So keep that in mind. Like, you know, once you pass your safety audit, it's not that, you know, you're free and clear to go out and do whatever you want to do because you know they can't take it back at any time so hopefully this information this video was helpful and deb prit j you know hopefully I, I was able to answer your questions oh one, one other thing so the, the last thing you mentioned in your question was um you say i'm under twenty six thousand pounds so i was told i don't need to do the drug program now According to the, you know, the FMCSA's website, if you operate a commercial vehicle um, in interstate commerce, so meaning that you travel outside of the state and it is more than 10,000 pounds and you are required to um, participate in a drug program. Now, and also just to reiterate, if you would like to receive a copy of the safety audit requirement checklist, then Go to the description of this video, find the um, find where I have the link to the new entrant safety audit checklist. Click the link in your email address and you will receive um, a copy of the list in your email shortly. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment in the video description. Also, if you know somebody who this video could have benefited, please share this video with them. Thanks again for watching.